Good evening, and welcome to the Some Goofy Dick Nozzle in a Bow Tie Show. Today's episode is brought to you by the letters L G G B T T T I Q Q A A P P. This goofy dick nozzle in a bow tie is going to explain to us how a cat walking across a keyboard is now responsible for Canadian human rights legislation. Go ahead, Mr. Dick Nozzle. Well, I mean, it's generally shortened to LGBTQ, uh, which is the communities, and there's a few extra ones they've added in there. It's generally shortened to gay. Yeah, I find it rather strange that despite the 13 letters tagged onto the end of the letter G, the letter that remains tagged onto the beginning is L for lesbian. Even though that's just another word for gay, and as such is even more redundant than the other late editions. You see, in the mid-twentieth century, some homosexual men got together and said, Hey guys, given that for all of modern history and all over the world, male homosexuality has been a criminal offence punishable by death or castration, maybe we need some solidarity and some recognition. Thus, the gay community was established. And then some women came along and said, What about us? You men getting chemically castrated by the government or strung up in the street by angry mobs, that's all well and good. But what about women who don't like dick? We feel like victims too. So get in the back seat and shut the fuck up. We're in charge of this vehicle now. And we're going to attach another 13 trailers to the back of it. Because, after all, a girl who once kissed another girl and liked it is just as victimised as that guy hanging from the fucking streetlight. Rule Britannia! And other such sarcastic ejaculations. Uh, but, um, and no one goes by that. Maybe that's to teach kids uh, the alphabet or not, but... I think I'll go with or not. Generally, it's the referred to, and the Prime Minister referred to it yesterday in the House of Commons during his apology, as LGBTQ. And, uh, and some people don't even know what it means, but they just know that means inclusiveness, it's a good thing, it's a question of tolerance. They don't know what it means, but they know what it means. And it means good. It means we tolerate men loving each other as long as women are in charge of it. Fascinating. I'll make this easier for you. What does two-spirit mean? Well, two-spirit sounds like there's someone they don't know whether they're, uh, you know, fish or fowl. They don't know whether they're, whether they're frick or frack. So they're clearly confused. Wrong! Two-spirit is what Canadian Aborigines call a person who embodies the spirit of a man and a woman. Not one or the other, both. Hence it is called two-spirit and not, uh, maybe one spirit, maybe the other, I can't tell, I'm confused. Not only are you ignorant on the subject of gender, on which you are speaking as an authority, you are also ignorant on the subject of indigenous cultures. If I sat here and claimed that native people who experience gender dysphoria are merely confused, then I would be labelled a bigot and a transphobe and probably by extension a sexist and a racist. And yet that's precisely what you are doing. And you're getting away with it simply because you are kowtowing to the authority of those things which you don't understand. Which just goes to show you None of you give a shit about knowledge or understanding or facts. You only care about maintaining your invented caste system and figuring out ways to invent your way to the top of it, willy bloody nilly. You would gladly keep the masters just as uneducated as the slaves as long as everyone stays in their box and the boxes are stacked appropriately. You claim to be in favour of equality and yet you are a prolific ruiner of it, you worthless worm of a human. I hope you are reincarnated as a digestive bacterium in the lower intestine of a pig. But you'll probably fuck that up as well. And, you know, again, if you're confused, what better place to go than to be at school? So, I mean, all those categories... What? All those categories that are in that uh, long litany that you laid out there, I'll bet you that no one, well, maybe five people in all of Canada, could lay out what exactly those are. It's lesbian, gay, genderqueer, bisexual, demisexual, transgender, transsexual, two-spirit, intersex, queer, questioning, asexual, allies, pansexual, and polyamorous. I'm glad I could be here to fill you in on the thing you're supposed to believe. Well, I mean, you've got in front of you, you have me at a disadvantage on that one, because I, to be very candid with you, as I said, L, everybody in Canada knows what LBGTQ, sometimes a two right. in the end, means. But that long one, quite frankly, until your producer showed it to me, I hadn't seen it, but then I looked at it. 
And you have all the definitions Sir, through Sir, a lot of people are under the impression that you're trolling everyone. But I think you're just a run-of-the-mill religious fanatic. But what's the matter Shut with Shut up. It? You've never read your scripture. You have no idea what it's about or what it means. But you're nevertheless bloody sure that it's the word of a benevolent and merciful higher power. Pardon me, sir, but I remain sceptical. Yeah, I realise that being sceptical of things will piss off the woke hipsters and the virtue signalers at each end of the identitarian horseshoe known as the anti-sceptic community, TM. But frankly, if all you can do is point at me and call me a noun as innocuous as sceptic, you are laughable failures at life. And I will lose zero sleep at the prospect of pissing you off. Go back to the person or persons you've decided should always be listened to and believed and suck their sacred fuckholes until their life force is drained. You are totally doing everyone a favor. I think you're absolutely right. Well, no, I'm not saying that everything a teacher's group thinks up is good. I mean, they've had some uh, some very different things before. They had a, a measure last summer, and if, in the, if they were in the States, they would have said, no school could be called the George Washington School. They said, get rid of that first prime minister of Canada. So they aren't always on par, but on this one, and I, to be uh, very candid, as I said at the outset, I don't know what all those mean. Well, I just fucking told you. It means everyone except monogamous heterosexuals. Incidentally, the majority of homeless people are men whose monogamous heterosexual relationships did not work out and were as such promptly sabotaged by your legal system. So it's not okay to exclude the names of prime ministers, but it is okay to exclude the majority of the homeless. Well, that explains how you ended up with hordes of monogamous heterosexual men littering the streets of your capital cities, and you left the political situation in the unimpeachable hands of the retarded love child of Fidel Castro and a syphilitic whore. Are you, are you picking on our prime minister? Well done, you! Didn't you pick a funny time to suddenly get what anyone's talking about? And yet I point out that you're excluding the majority of your population by virtue of their sexual orientation, and you're giving me nothing. Well, I'm sorry that you feel I'm giving you nothing, because I'm giving you the honest truth. Yes, and the honest truth is you know nothing. The honest truth is that most people in Canada would not know all those categories, but they would say, you know what? Even if there's 10 people out there in Durham County where this group was meeting, then that's a good thing. Bring them in. And if they're saying that they have some you know, sexual change or some ch sexual option that I, I don't know about, well, let's all talk about it. Most people in Canada, sir, are currently sitting with their heads in their hands, staring at you through the trembling gaps between their fingers, thinking, how the fuck did we get here? When did we put the fucking Adams family in charge of public relations? Everybody wants to be included. That's what this whole thing is about. It's society you want to be included. That's a social contract. So, you know, no one, I'm sure, went out and polled people and they said out of the thousand people, if you are that fifth category in that long line of uh, that long litany of names that you have. It's demisexual. The fifth one is demisexual. Do you know what demisexual means? You don't, do you? But you're sure they should be included in whatever the fuck you're including them into. Right, no one's going to be polled on this thing. Not a fan of democracy, then. We don't run everything by polls. Maybe you should. The polls are the only ones not getting blown up. Boom boom. But it sounds to me that you're taking an issue with some teachers saying, let's try and bring it together. What I have a problem with, you badly aged Timmy Mallet, is some teachers saying shit like, biological sex is not real. And you will be reprimanded if you tell your students otherwise. Or show them a clip of someone claiming otherwise. I sorry to change the subject, but I didn't change it by much, did I? The only groups or demographics in Canada that are being not just excluded, but actively discriminated against on grounds of sexual orientation are men, men's rights advocates, gamergators, teachers and teaching assistants who commit the cardinal sin of telling their students the whole story, and unassuming citizens who neglect to use the pronouns that some delusional cunt just made up yesterday. Is your precious elbow flailing Ken Doll of a Prime Minister ever going to apologise to those people? Do you think Lindsay Shepherd deserves an apology, Trudeau? Do you think Gamergate deserves an apology from you, given that you called them an anti-woman hate group, and that is not how they identify? What if I told you that LGBTQ actually stands for... Lindsay, gamers, badgers, and Trudeau questioners. 
Yes, suddenly the inclusion message has become unpalatable, hasn't it? Because those are people whom we should not include in our inclusion. You are a buffoon, and an ignoramus and a snake, all rolled into one hideous chimera of regressive drain circling, and you do not get to speak for Canadians. I've been to Canada six times now, and I can confirm that you do not speak for Canadians. You only speak for the day-walking zombies in charge of Canada's academic institutions. Canadians are polite. You people are as far from polite as it's humanly possible. You are liars, frauds, and authoritarian moral busybodies who only exist because you are able to take advantage of the politeness of the average citizens. Well, it's got to change. And it's up to you, fine Canadians, to leave your politeness at the door, along with the gloves you must take off. And tell these fucking hosers that you are not going to take it anymore. Yet I'm not talking about the LGBT quap people. They don't speak for them either. Most gay people don't want to sit in the penthouse at the top of the progressive caste system that's been built for them. They just want to be treated like normal people. I'm talking about the cunts who built the tower, who built the progressive stack out of twigs and straw and semi-adhesive pieces of liquid shit. Speak up. Tell these cunts what you think of them and record it. Record everything. And then watch them try to wriggle out of the black hole of lies they dug themselves into. It may well take two and a half years for them to admit that they are in a fucking hole. Or it may take less time. If some other space leper happens to have come along and set a precedent. You'll never get an apology from Trudeau. I'm pretty sure he's a robot. But you can get one from the scumbags who tried to ruin your life. If you play your cards right. In case anyone's wondering how the trial went, I'm afraid I cannot reveal any details. But it went generally quite well. But that's no reason to get complacent. Also, I'm supposed to be in character, and my character hates the honey badgers. So, so screw the honey badgers, and screw Alison Seaman. Name one thing that men's rights advocates have ever achieved, eh? Said some spitty little gutter snipe who generally hasn't done anything except shit on people who have. All right, I, I, I think I've completed the circle of bitterness. We can get back to normality now, whatever that is. I'm going. It's fucking cold here. Goodbye, and fuck right, and fuck left, and fuck both ways before crossing the street, or I'll kill you. This video was made in the Badger Cave. The warm part, with the central heating and whatnot. I have to stand here for about 22 seconds, just in case you feel like going to any of these links. Even though you're not going to. Will you stop complaining? I'm not the one who's fucking complaining. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you finding a way to complain on someone else's behalf so it doesn't feel like your hand's fucking freezing right now? But you're on my hand. Your other hand!